All this talk about the Big 12 expanding east is real, but what does that do for a BYU or an Arizona or a Utah? They can't like that, right? This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, or whenever you're watching this episode. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. That's Jake Hatch of Locked On Cougars. And today you are listening to the number one Big 12 podcast in America. Thank you for doing that. Very fun. Look, there have been talks. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day, by the way. Talks of eastward expansion of the Big 12. And Jake, with the proposed college football playoff change of three automatic bids for the SEC and the Big Ten and only two for the Big 12, it shows that they want to create a second tier conference here. The way to combat that is to bring in a UNC or to get lucky with a Clemson or Miami. How, how do you convince those teams, the big brands, to come to you? But I'm not, I, I don't know if it's all fun and dandy for BYU or Arizona or Utah or the westernmost schools. You just got here and now we're already talking about bringing in guys on the East Coast. How does that make you feel? Uh, not great because as you mentioned, as newcomers to this conference, you'd like to have some time to get settled and establish yourself. But if you were to go out, uh, speaking of the big 12 and snag, let's say a North Carolina or a Miami or a Florida state, like the big dogs of the ACC, well, they come in, they immediately take headlines away from what would be BYU, Utah, the Arizona schools. Those are headlines they would hope to scoop up. So yeah, it's not necessarily ideal, but let's be honest, this ecosystem, anything, I mean, anything is possible. With that being said, how much of of that rhetoric or even this dialogue comes from a place of a of a subjective attitude, right? You're a fan of BYU. That's that's part of hosting Locked On Cougars. How much of this is I'm a fan of this school. I don't want to see that brand go away or be diminished by other big brands. And then how much would be objective in liking having more prowess in the conference? Well, and that 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 is a very, very good point you make there. And that's the thing about this. I, I've been watching and uh, covering BYU for decades now. And the thing about it is BYU has aspired to always be at this level for literally decades. Lavelle Edwards, yeah. when he was the head coach, he talked all the time, just give us a fair shot at, at playing at the big time. And he never got that chance as a head coach, even though he won that national title back in the 1980s. But they are finally at the level they've always aspired to be at and to have it potentially where, yeah, you, you got to this level and then automatically the SEC and Big Ten in just a few years' time, theoretically, pull away and essentially make you a second-tier system, yeah, that would not be ideal because it would kind of be like, we worked so hard, speaking from the BYU perspective, yeah. of getting here, and then to have them pull away again, that'd be a really, really tough pill to swallow. Jake, I'm going to let you speak for Utah, the Arizona schools, Colorado here, and... <laughs> Texas Tech, even the the teams that are the Western portion of this conference. Do you already have issue with UCF and West Virginia? And because people talk all the time about travel and how you Cal playing against uh, NC State in a conference game. Now, for you, though, did, did that seem like an issue day one of joining the Big 12? Or, and is it more of an issue now? Uh, for BYU, speaking of the BYU perspective, it's not. But for the Arizona schools in Utah, and I, I work in sports radio here in Salt Lake City, and I, I can speak more authoritatively on Utah. They have been so used to being so uh, Pac-12 centric in terms of the travel, mm -hmm. where they had to go to Seattle, they had to go to California, they had to go to Arizona. They didn't have to go clear across the country to go to Florida, to go to Morgantown. That's the, that is going to be uh, an adjustment, I think, for those schools in particular. BYU, by virtue of their independent status in football, has already been doing this. They've played all over the country. They had played in Orlando when they played UCF as an independent. They have been to Washington, D.C. to play uh, West Virginia once upon a time. They are not uh, they're not out of the, I guess, the out of the norm of traveling a lot. But those new schools, Utah, the Arizona schools, Colorado, where they've been so used to having go essentially just to the West Coast, the, the adaptation having going into the central time zone, then going to the eastern time zone, going clear away as far as way as Florida. Speaking of Utah, they're going to play at UCF Thanksgiving weekend. That's mm -hmm. some extensive travel on what is a weird week to begin with. And if they do have the aspirations of playing in the Pac-12, uh, no, the, the Pac-12, the Big 12 title game, Let's say they do make it. Well, you have to go do, to UCF, fly all the way home to Utah. And then, oh, by the way, the very next week, go right back to Arlington. That There is there is a travel element here that is absolutely going to play a role for those new teams. Jake, how much of this is the rose-colored glasses are gone? The, the newness is gone because there comes a point where you... 
You've just met your girlfriend's family. You love them day one. You have to love them day one. By year five, that's when the mother-in-law gets nitpicky and you start having issues, right? It never starts the first day. Do you feel like BYU's honeymoon phase is over and you can start thinking, oh, how can we maximize the Big 12? I think there is a little bit of that coming off. You mentioned like the sheen of the rose colored glasses that was there for two plus years as they got ready to join the conference. They've gone through year one of football. They're almost done with year one of basketball here. And I think the BYU has seen a lot of what they expected to see, but also some new things that have probably popped up in the time that they've been in the conference as short as it's been uh, relatively. And they are going to start, I think, starting to say, okay, what about this? What about that? And yeah. that's, that's one thing that BYU, I think wants to have a say in with this conference. They're not going to go in there and essentially slap their hand on the table and say, no, this is how it's going to be. But you will start to see them start to say, okay, what about something like this? I'll start suggesting stuff because they're a member of the conference. They have that right to do so now. I like the idea that BYU fans or even the Western most fans are not confident in trying to expand out East, specifically with brands that create even more or not, not even create. They diminish. They take away from what BYU or Colorado might be. Then the question can be posed. If you're one of those fans or a specifically a BYU fan for you, Jake, are you kind of looking around saying, hey, Washington State and Oregon State, they're pretty close and they're not bad brands or a San Diego State or a Boise State. Do you then look out west and say we still need to expand, but with someone closer to us? Uh, speaking from my perspective, yes, I'd like to see more Western expansion because it, here's the thing. They're, they're, they're playing on playing in that late night window. The more teams that are in that late night window, guess what? It means that there are a chance for BYU not to play every home game seemingly at eight o'clock. Now I'm not saying that's yeah. going to happen with the Arizona schools there, Utah here, Colorado, but having maybe a Wazoo or Oregon state in there, San Diego state, maybe Boise state that br- spreads it around more evenly. And then by the way, regional rivalries are what makes up this sport that we all love. So if you you can get more of those teams where uh, there's more of a familiarity for BYU fans with the Wazoos and the Oregon States versus maybe what West Virginia and Cincinnati are. I'm all for that. Jake, are you worried? Where is the scale of worry when you hear about the Big Ten and the SEC possibly getting more automatic qualifiers in the college football playoff? And they're going to scale this thing up for different conferences, create tier two leagues, the Big 12 being one of those. Does that give you concern that realignment is going to shake out of the Big 12's favor soon, no matter if it's east or west? I do think the realignment's not done. I, I'm with you on that. Now, when the original proposal for that 14 came playoff came up and there was talk that they could get four automatic bids for the mm. SEC and the Big Ten, I was like, oh, okay, that's got to be a no-go. Yeah. And that's uh, based on the reporting I've heard, read and heard recently. It feels like they pulled back on that. That's why I've got the three there. I'm actually uh, more okay. If they're going to get the three automatic qualifiers, the fact that the Big 12 is being proposed to get two uh, for however long this stays status quo, that's I'm okay with that because that still gives you at least two teams in the mix there, whereas as they were proposing just one automatic qualifier with them getting four automatic qualifiers. Yes, I do expect that those two will continue to kind of throw their weight around as much as they want to say, no, we're doing it in the best interest of the sport. No, 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 no. The Big Ten and the SEC are acting in the best interest of the Big Ten and the SEC. And at some point, it feels like that they may try and uh, pull a power play and separate themselves. But if you can keep them in the fold for however long you can, I'd say all the more for it. Uh, Jake, I love that JT Wester still have locked on Utes was so pro East for expansion. So the fact that you give a perspective that says, whoa, hold the phone a bit is great here. The last thing I'll give you when it comes to realignment, and this one really isn't realignment centric. It's just you centric. Yeah. If you're a BYU fan, are you happy to be in the Big 12 still just as happy now as you were a year ago even? Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Speaking from my perspective, I think BYU fans by and large are enjoying it. Like I said, this is something that BYU's aspired to have for decades, literally decades at this point. They won that national title in 1984 and saw the whole landscape of college football transform after that to uh, to make it so they couldn't do that ever again. They are very excited to be at this level. Now, like I said, if the SEC and the Big Ten do pull away and essentially make you second-class citizens once again in the college football universe, so be it. But for the time being, BYU, I think uh, – I'm speaking for all Cougar fans. They're very excited to be where they're at right now. Hey, coming up, let's talk about the logic of ranking a BYU or a Baylor or a Cincinnati below Arizona State right now in the way too early Big 12 power rankings. Make it make sense. This is Locked On Big 12 and Locked On Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.
Oh, baby, today's show is brought to you by one of the brand new sponsors at Locked On. It is Nissan, and I'm so flippin' excited about this, and guess why? Because I drive a Nissan Maxima. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the corner? Our friends at Nissan have lined up SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. I love Nissan. I love my Nissan. It's got the thing where I go boop, boop, boop. I press a button. It drives the speed that I wanted to drive. It keeps me away from the cars in front of me, and I love it. Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store are all built right in your 12 point three inch HD touchscreen in the 2024 Nissan Rogue. This incredible lineup includes the Pathfinder with room for up to eight. I was in college. I know what it's like to have eight people in my car and it's crammed. You can do it now and not be crammed in a four by four capability, 284 horsepower. That's more than I can count. 6,000 pounds of towing as well, or the Nissan Armada. Also a 2024 model will change what you expect from a full-size SUV, plus a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight in first-class luxury and style. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. Be like me. Drive a Nissan. Jay Catch, Josh Pate. I like him. I like him. I like him. I do. I like his stuff. I, I you know, he is someone who's been on the show. Uh, someone who I think is good, though he ranked BYU at 15th in the power rankings, the Big 12 programs, saying that he was taking the last three years into account, which feels a little weird because BYU has been pretty good the last three years. Neither here nor there. Uh, he has BYU behind Arizona State. He has them just ahead of Cincinnati, who's at 16. He has Baylor at 14 right there. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that BYU would be so far below Arizona State or Houston. Help help me make sense. What is there any logic? Do you are, are you also not buying the Cougars right now? Uh, I'm not buying them being lower than Arizona State right now because I think if you put those two teams head to head, those I think BYU wins that game. I think the biggest I think that people are pointing to Drake is the, the fact that BYU has massive question marks at this quarterback position. Is it going to be Jake Ratzloff, the incumbent, uh, winning the job? Uh, spring football is just underway here in Provo, and obviously we'll be tracking that heavily. But they brought in Gary Bohannon, who does have bona fide a resume. You know this as a Baylor guy. He led them to that Sugar Bowl title and that Big Twelve title in 2021, and he is a guy that uh, the BYU coaches have been uh, talking about saying that they feel like he's 100% healthy after almost 18 months layoff uh, during his time at USF for that shoulder injury. If they can find a steady quarterback and get better quarterback play overall this year, this is a BYU squad I think is going to surprise some folks. But obviously that that is very, very uh, predicated on them finding a steady quarterback because the Keaton Slovis and Jake Retzloff transition last year just did not go the way they expected it to. So whoever wins that quarterback job, if they can provide the steady uh, play that BYU uh, has been accustomed to with Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall before that. This is a BYU team. I think it could sort of surprise some folks, but I get where Pate and others might be coming from just looking at it and saying, hey, they don't have a set quarterback. Why would I believe in them? Are you okay? We'll put it that way then. Are you okay with BYU being at 15? Uh, I'm okay in the sense that it's a great spot to be in. It's similar to BYU basketball this uh, season. They were picked 13th out of 14 teams. And what have they done? They're currently sitting in a tie for fifth. They're going up against TCU uh, for a chance to st- establish themselves as the fourth best team in the conference as the Big 12 uh, as the conference t- tournament gets close. So I-, I like the fact that if you're underrated and people are overlooking you, you have the chance to jump up and really steal headlines as one of those overachievers. I think in that uh, in that vein of thinking, it's a good spot to be in for BYU. Do you believe BYU will end the season in 2024 as the 15th best team in the Big 12? I do not. I actually, I think the BYU could find themselves kind of mid tier. I think they understand what they're up against. They had a five and two record and then uh, lost five straight to end last season. And it has sat, uh, it has not sat well with anybody inside that football program and all the conversations they had with people, coaches and players and administrators. They know that they were so close, especially against Oklahoma and Oklahoma state uh, uh, programs, those final two games to getting to bowl eligibility. They did not like sitting home in December. They want to get back to the back to the postseason. I'm not saying that BYU has any illusions of being a contender this year in the Big 12, but I think that BYU has got uh, full intentions of winning at least six games and hopefully kind of being uh, mid-tier in this conference in year two. I mentioned Cincinnati at 16, Baylor at 14, Arizona State at 13, even West Virginia at 11 here. Are you surprised to see those teams around BYU and the Cougars in their company? 
I'm not because BYU, I think one of the biggest lessons, I'll point to West Virginia, for example, last year, BYU went to Morgantown. And there was a lot of us out here in Utah thinking, okay, West Virginia has been a pretty good team, but BYU needs to show what they're capable of. And BYU uh, figured till he did not get off the bus in that game. Garrett Green and the West Virginia Mountaineers ran over BYU. I think the lesson that BYU learned in that game in particular was that you have to show up every single week in this conference. There's, there's no layups in this conference. You're going to have to show up every week because BYU is an independent. They'd play a big game, then have a week or two where they played some lesser opponents where they could essentially coast until and then kind of ramp back up against another big opponent two or three weeks down the line. That's not the case at the Power 4 level here for BYU. So I think they learned a very, very good lesson last year about knowing, hey, this is a, a weekly thing. You've got to be on your game. And I think that the Cougars will benefit from that because I think they're going into spring practice here and on into their preparation for the upcoming season knowing that they have got to bring it for 12 weeks straight. And if they don't, if they take a game off, they will get boat race like they did against West Virginia. So yes, I'm not surprised BYU's in that mix there, but I think BYU has got the mindset that they are going to rise above that group. Southern Illinois, Jake, that might be the only easy game on BYU schedule. After that, it just, it gets bad. At SMU and at Wyoming are both not fun games. I'm not sure if BYU will be favored in both of those, but at least one, I'm sure. And then looking past that, bear with me a bit, but I don't know if I see yet a game based on last year's final standings where BYU will be favored out of Kansas State, likely the Wildcats, Baylor on the road, probably a one-point spread in favor of the Bears, Arizona at home, the quarterback situation you mentioned, it's likely Arizona. Oklahoma State wins the Big 12 title. <laughs> it gets worse. UCF on the road. They've got a lot coming back. Utah on the road, not favored in that one. Kansas at home. They're a Big 12 title contender. You're probably not favored in that one. At Arizona State, because it's on the road, I still don't know if you're favored. And then Houston at home. Give me the BYU Cougars favored by at least a touchdown. So, But looking at the schedule and understanding that you're probably only going to be, you're a dog in nine of these games. Are you confident in that? How do you see this schedule and pull out six wins? Uh, honestly, it's going to be BYU has to take that underdog mentality and have that chip on their shoulder knowing that they're being disrespected. But you're right. They they are going to be underdogs in a lot of these games. This is a very, very stout schedule for BYU. Oh, yeah. The road games at SMU and at Wyoming, I think BYU fans right now are thinking, okay, those are layups. They're not layups. SMU is going to the ACC. Wyoming has been a very, very capable Mountain West program. Now, they do have a head coach, but he's been in the program for quite some time. And you have to go on the road to both of those. You mentioned a lot of the big dogs that are facing the conference. There's a pretty even split of home and away, but you're going to be underdogs in all of those games. So, yeah, you're going to have to essentially sweep the the, the non-conference slate, uh, go 3-0 you know, to start the year. You'll probably get the Houston game at the end of the year, I would imagine. And so that's four games. And then can you find two more in that mix? And I believe the BYU, if they have that chip on their shoulder and keep that mentality of keeping it uh, locked in every single game, I think they have enough capability of picking off a win here and there. And if you get to 6-6, six and six, considering the, the strength of schedule it looks like right now, for BYU getting back to the postseason I think is an accomplishment for this team BYU can be a final four team in hoops let's talk about it this is locked on big 12 a crossover with locked on Cougars on the locked on podcast network your team every day Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. It's like, oh, well, Cleveland State's playing tonight against Northern Kentucky. I can go bet on Cleveland State and win money, and I can do it on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players or teams as well with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. The Utah Jazz are playing. You can go bet on Keontae George to do the thing of basketball and win money. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to shoot your shot. Five bucks for $150 in free play. FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Jake, the BYU Cougars basketball team. And, and I don't want to get on my soapbox too quickly here, but winning a game at, at Allen Fieldhouse legitimizes the Big 12. You have all these ACC coaches for some reason that are screaming that the Big 12 is overrated. Kansas isn't just a one-off team. This isn't just, oh, they were good that year. This is a team that wins national championships. They are good across the realm of college basketball, not just the Big 12. BYU went and beat that team on the road. Kansas isn't overrated. It's impossible to overrate a blue blood that is that level of good so when BYU wins it legitimizes the strength of the Big 12 the depth of the Big 12 agree or disagree 
Completely agree. hundred percent. That's the thing about this. Uh, my dad. So I was uh, with him in Idaho over the weekend at a family event. And he told me, I didn't know he was going, but he said, Hey, I'm flying out to Kansas city on Monday. I'm going to the BYU Kansas game. And my exact oh. words I think were, Hey, well enjoy Lawrence and enjoy fog Allen field house, but we'll see how BYU does in that game. I, we, I had no, I had no illusions. that BYU was going to go in there and do what they did. Yeah. But the yeah. fact that they did what they did, as you mentioned, it legitimizes BYU. It legitimizes the big 12 as a whole because that means that any team uh, in theory can go on the road and win games. That was a massive, massive program type changing win uh, for BYU to go into Allen Fieldhouse in their first uh, venture there as a Big 12 member and pull off that victory. And the nice part was it shows yet again that BYU, it feels like at times where the wheels might be falling off for this BYU basketball team, they seem to bounce back in in crazy ways. They lost to Kansas State and it was like, okay, now you got to go to Kansas. There's no way they're winning that game. Well, guess what? They, They have the whole mentality. I've said it multiple times this week on different shows and on my own podcast. They have the whole mentality. Goonies never die. I'm just going to insert. I'm going to make an edit. BYU Cougars never die. They just refuse to let it go. I love it. I also, look, Jake, and this is not a conversation BYU has had the luxury of having every year, and that's seeding, right? Yeah. Most years for a lot of schools, it's I just hope we can get there. Make us whatever seed you want to. I just want to be in the big dance. Mm-hmm. For BYU, you now have the luxury of considering, huh, I wonder what will be in the NCAA tournament. And recently, Joe Lenardi has placed the Cougars at five, as a five seed on that line. There is a mass. I've seen it. There's a massive difference in five and eight. If you are an eight seed, you are signing up for if you win round one against an evenly matched team, the number one overall seed or a, a number one seed for BYU being on that five line. Does that create an environment, a, a situation, a, a possibility where the Cougars are a final four caliber team if given the correct draw? Uh, yeah, and you want know, the correct draw is if they play the first two rounds in Salt Lake City because they, oh, they, yeah. have, they have the first two rounds at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. If that happens, BYU will have a just incredible home court advantage. I know it's 40 miles north of Provo, but you can uh, guarantee that BYU fans will be there in droves and that could push BYU to the Sweet 16 and if BYU makes it to the Sweet 16 with their ability to get a uh, catch fire from the three-point line, I don't count it out of the realm of possibility. Am I anticipating that happening a uh, final four run for BYU? Not necessarily, but the 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 path the the path is there for BYU. But I think it all starts with them staying on that five line and getting that seating that pushes them into that matchup in Salt Lake City. If you're a BYU fan, I, look, I, I'll say it, you don't have to. It's true. It's a lock. They're in the NCAA tournament. There, yes. There's not, nothing can happen at this point to change that. Do you want to lose as early as possible in the Big Twelve tournament? Not necessarily because BYU, I think, wants to continue to show what they're capable of and just continue to kind of fine tune things. They've they've got a very good basketball team this year. There's no doubt about that. They've got a very balanced squad, but I think they want to make a good impression in the Big 12 tournament. They had some very early exits during their era at the West Coast Conference. It's been over 20 years, Drake, since BYU has won a conference title. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2001 in the Mountain West uh, Championships that they last won a conference title. I'm not saying that BYU uh, can't win it. I don't expect him to win it, but I'd like to see them go on a run in Kansas City. I want to change your mind. Lose, lose immediately. I don't, having been here long enough, just lose as fast as possible. The team's Here's the thing about this. BYU struggles on the road. Their shooting percentages have been outside of that Kansas oh, yeah. game. They've yeah. struggled. And playing in a neutral venue, uh, we'll see how, how it holds up. If their three-point shooting travels, they can make a run. But, yeah, if they play like they did against Kansas State where you go 6 of 31 from the three-point line, you know, yeah, you're going to crash out real quick. And it would give you a chance, essentially, as you mentioned, kind of heal up and get ready for the big dance. Uh, Jake, this is – I love this. This is – Per shot quality, which is where I go for all my basketball analytics. They know what they're talking about. They're NBA teams and college teams that have signed on as their official analytics partner. Says that BYU is the number 10 team in the country offensively, number 25 defensively. That was the big question. Can this team play defense? And the answer originally was uh, maybe. And now it's yes. What happened? Uh, honestly, the biggest thing is they have, they are essentially switching their defensive alignments possession by possession. You'll see Cahill Fennell, who is, uh, for all intents and purposes, their defensive coordinator, each possession down the court. You'll see him flash something uh, towards his guys on the court, and you'll see them drop into a 1-3-1 one, one zone. The next possession down, they'll switch 1-5 through five in a man concept. Next possession down, it feels like they go to a 2-3 zone or a box in one. They have mixed up their defensive looks all season long, and they do it literally possession by possession, and that's been a big reason why they've been so successful on defense. It's not an 
easy style to play. Trust me, they've they've had issues with it when it, it's not uh, locked in. But when they're able to make those transitions and essentially find the defenses that work best against the opponent they're playing against, their defensive ratings have held strong. And you mentioned the fact that number 25 in the country, that is light years. I mean, light years better than any of us expected going into this season. It's light years better than I expected a month into the season where it was like, oh, yeah, BYU is good. The defense just isn't that great. And then now they are. And I, yeah, I, BYU is playing chess and forcing you to play checkers because when the defense changes that often, you force your opponent into street ball. And obviously it's tough to keep that up if you're the defensive team. But BYU has done it. And now they are good. Jake, if. Uh, two twofold here. If there's somebody listening right now, a locked on Big 12 fan, it's like, oh, this Jake guy's cool. I should listen to his podcast. Where can they go? And on the flip side, if they think, man, this BYU guy has, he's blowing hot air bar skirt. He's just a big homer. Where can they go to find you still? Well, uh, yeah, you can search out the show Locked on Cougars on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. It's available free, like just like this show is Locked on Big 12. Also, if you want my thoughts on all things uh, uh, sports in general, follow me at Jacob C. Hatch on X or Twitter. And then the show's also all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Real simple to find. Locked on Cougars. Give us a follow. We'll have some fun along the way. That's Jay Cash. I'm Drake Toll. We'll see you again on Monday on our respective shows talking all things sports. This is the number one Big 12 podcast in America, and you've been listening to Locked On. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Doce Grande.